This morning I am in Sacramento, sitting in the Sacramento County Public Law Library, talking with our colleague Jean L. Willis, who is the library's assistant director for support services. Uh, and actually, as of just a couple of days ago, you one day. one day you became the acting head of the law library because of the sudden passing of your predecessor, uh, Carl Henning. Uh, I was pleased to be able to have Carl. Yeah, it looks good on the screen, so that's a good position. My good friend. Yeah, she was this probably a, a wonderful mentor and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, it happens. It happens. <laughs> Unfortunately, at my point in life, more of it is happening to my friends, and I guess I, I haven't been the guest of honor yet at one of these funerals, so <laughs> yeah. could be worse. Could be worse. <laughs> yeah. I also want to uh, mention um, that you are now in your third year as uh, treasurer of the uh, American Association of Law Libraries, or AALL as we now officially call it. <laughs> Some of us have old bad habits, huh? Or double A double L as we used to always call it. <laughs> yeah, double A double L. That's probably good too. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Perhaps later in our conversation today, we can talk a little bit about some of your adventures there, but uh, I figure, well, we'll just see how far we get in the time we're allotted. Uh, it's our custom, uh, Gene, in these conversations to begin with a little personally, personal history about yourself. Could you tell us about your life perhaps today and, and, and growing up too? Sure, but you know, as I told you before we started the cameras rolling, Pat, um, I'd appreciate it if I could sort of take a little charge right now and go well, do. somewhat off the script and then mm -hmm. hopefully circle back around because, as you mentioned, my dear friend, confidant, and law library director, known for real, Coral Henning, passed away about two weeks ago today. Yeah. Very difficult circumstance, and so I wanted to you know, focus on things that have been meaningful to me about AAAL and the profession and hopefully maybe to help others see why this profession is so important and what it's brought to me in my life. And one thing is just being able to connect and be involved with incredible people, incredible people with whom I have amazing friendships. One of them being, of course, my now deceased former friend, Coral Henning, who was such, such a leading light in our profession. Mm -hmm. So amazing. All I'm hearing is just, you know, tribute after tribute after tribute being paid to her. And I really want to use this opportunity to chime in on that. Coral was an incredible law librarian and an incredible person. She brought so much life to our community and to our profession. She's done so much to help others and to put forward the whole access to justice movement. Um, so I need to speak about that. And it's been very hard to let go of her and her friendship. It's been very hard for our staff here, too. This is a very traumatic event for all of us. And we're kind of pretty bereft at this point in time and finding our way forward. But what it comes back into is, in terms of my many years in this profession, and I won't tell you how many that is, oh, well. <laughs> or I may. We'll, we allow some secrets. <laughs> <laughs> well, I keep that a secret, but it's been a few years. And over the course of those years, um, not only have I grown professionally and learned so much and gained so much, but the biggest thing that I've gained is friendships. Friendships over the years that have meant so much to me that enrich my life, that enrich my professional career, that's aided me in growth, both personally and professionally. And I, I really want to reach out to anybody who happens to see this silly interview, that that's really what you want to focus on as a law librarian, or as a librarian, or really as anybody. My life has been immeasurably enhanced and enriched by knowing the people that I've met through Double A Double L. I also did work for many years in Australia, and so I've also been enhanced and enriched by my mem my friendships with um, the good people in the Australian Law Library mm -hmm. Association, with whom I'm still in touch, and um, I still have friendships down there. 
And so it's great. When I go to Australia, I have places to stay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who can argue with that? So that is a focus um, while we here at our staff deal with our grief. Yeah, lift that up a little bit closer. There, perfect. Deal with our grief and our sorrow over this wonderful person who enriched and enhanced our lives here, both in Sacramento, but I'm telling you, across the state of California. Well, as a mentor and leader, she really fit the, the goal. She was amazing. And she empowered the rest of you to do the same kinds of things. She was amazing. You know, Two days before she passed, I was at a Council of California County Law Libraries meeting. Mm -hmm. um, one day we spent over at the state capitol um, advocating with our legislators to give us more permanent funding through state funds. But throughout the course of the two days, there was a meeting with the, the CCCLL librarians, and they were from county law libraries across the state. All I heard, all I heard was, oh, Coral Henning is amazing. The Sacramento County Public Law Library is amazing. You guys, we rely on you so much. We have this content-rich website. And it's Coral's vision that got us there, but I do want to express my acknowledgement and appreciation for our fabulous staff. We have an amazing staff here. They're great, they're smart, they're talented, they're gifted, and we've created a treasure a treasure for the state and a treasure for the country on our website. It is so heavily used and all I hear from our smaller county law libraries who, you know, they just don't have money to have a lot of staffing and some of them don't have law backgrounds or even library backgrounds and they're like, oh, thank you so much. We use your step-by-steps, we use your legal research guides, we use your leaflets, we use your how-to guides. It's all because of Coral and her vision of what yeah. she saw and what she wanted to provide and present for access to justice. And so that's where we're at. Of course, like I say, our staff really deserves much praise and acknowledgement for their work on it. We do keep those materials up to date, which you, Pat, can understand. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> that's the work. That's the real work. Because um, as we tell, um, the class attendees in our, our legal uh, law library basics classes, what you're paying for when you get these books from Lexis and Wessel and whoever, it's not the paper and the trees that are killed for it. It's the legal research attorneys who keep everything updated. Mm -hmm. So our staff here, we're constantly going through our, our materials and updating them every year throughout the year. We're watching the legislation as it comes down from the mm -hmm. state mainly, but a little bit federally. So that's the value that we provide, and that is to be acknowledged to our whole staff. And it's Coral's vision, though, that has gotten yeah. us here. And we're so happy to, you know, we can provide that value to the citizens of California. Mm -hmm. so well, she was always recognized as a real leader in the field because of the work that she was doing here at the library. Absolutely. Among other things. Among other things. And that's the thing. We're getting tributes from everywhere because she was, <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking online and just saying, I can't believe what she was doing. And I mean, she was doing stuff up till like the bitter end. Mm -hmm. um, her outreach was, her, her outreach was prodigious. Her, her work was prodigious. She was involved with a lot of local groups here in Sacramento, not just legal groups, but things like our slow food movement, the Grange and other issues like that, her neighborhood associations. Um, it's amazing <laughs> how much she did. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that she's to be acknowledged for is, uh, as I said, a lot of the smaller county law libraries, they don't have nearly the kind of funding that we do. And she did a lot of outreach and support work mm -hmm. with these local, you know, the local county law libraries in our area. And those people are so, the staff there are so grateful for what she did for them. She came in and helped the boards hire staff when, when they were losing staff. She helped train new people on what to do. Some of them are like, I'm not a librarian. I didn't know what to do. If it wasn't for Coral, I, I, I wouldn't yeah. know where I'd be. That's so. one of the things about our profession is we're so welcoming of people into it who may not have all the pedigrees that some of us do. Right. Uh, and yet, you know, how can we help? who cares if they are doing the job? Yes, exactly. How can we help you? What can we do? And that ties into my whole thing about 
mentors and friendships throughout my career. Mm -hmm. And another law librarian, Noam Peril, who I dearly miss and dearly love. Mm -hmm. And this is somebody who will not be familiar to people in the United States. Uh -huh. She's and from Australia? She's, one, she's an Aussie, dinky die. Uh -huh. My good friend, my beloved mentor, Lynn Pollock, I have to acknowledge any, her. She is no longer with us, unfortunately. She passed away quite some time ago. Mm -hmm. Another very sad passing in my life. Lynn was just incredible. Um, she was an incredible law librarian in Sydney. She um, was the director of the Law Courts Library in Sydney for many years, and she was another true visionary. I've been so blessed to work with some really visionary people. And at that time, that was when automation was only just beginning, but she was doing just many interesting and outstanding projects down in Sydney. Um, they have a lot of long service leave where they can leave their jobs for <laughs> really long periods of time and come back to it. So lucky. I don't know if they still do that now. A lot of things changed in the um, years since I've moved away. But at that time, she took a three-year leave of absence, and I filled in for her and her job. And it was daunting. I mean, talk about big shoes to fill. Um, she was doing just really unusual stuff, um, interesting stuff, and I had to step in and fill in for her. So I wanted to acknowledge Lynn. She's somebody very dear to my heart and somebody who still informs my career to this day. And when I go down to Australia, she's really highly regarded and recognized down there. She's quite the person. Another mentor of mine and good friend of mine is somebody that I'll be seeing tomorrow. This is Regina Smith. Regina is the somewhat semi-retired director of the Jenkins Law Library, one of the oldest law libraries in the country. Mm -hmm. And Regina, I've known for a long, long time. And this is also about friendships that we cultivate in the association and people that we know, people that we regard. There's people in this picture like John Adkins who has helped me out a lot through this transition with Coral. He's the director at the San Diego County Public Law Library. He's been a real true friend and a trooper and a true friend to this library. Yeah. You know, Diane Rodriguez is in here, Lucy Chrissy Gonzalez who's in New York City and others in this we all work together and help each other out and, and provide support and education and insight, and that's what's so important. Regina has also been a mentor of mine here in the United States, another powerhouse visionary in this field. Um, they're going to really miss her at Jenkins, although she's leaving it in some very good hands, and I'm sure that they will be fine and carry forward. Mm -hmm. um, but Regina is somebody who kind of ran her library a bit like a business, which is sort of how Corals run this library, too, which is a little bit of an unusual concept for some. Might not be such a bad idea, given the fact that times can be a little tight if you're not careful with the business end of things. That's exactly right. And I mean, I think that applies across the board. I think oh, yes. there was a lot of, I, I can't say, I, I did work at the University of Sydney Law School Library many mm -hmm. years ago, but that's you know, my only exposure in academ academia. But I think a lot of libraries which used to kind of be able to go forward and not have to think too much about money. I mean, that's all very much changed yeah. in this day and age. Well, somebody always had to, and that was my job. <laughs> yeah, that was yours. When I was director. <laughs> but I think money was a little easier, in, in, you know, some was. years ago. And, yeah, and it you was. And it wasn't quite as concerning. And, and there was a perception in academic life that the library was extremely essential. Now there's a perception, well, it's all online. Exactly. And we hear that here too. Oh yeah. And I say, well, yes, in fact it is a lot online for our library, but mm -hmm. that online stuff on our website, not just talking about the internet, which of course is what people are meaning, it doesn't happen by magic. Yeah. And even the stuff well, on the e internet. Even years ago, before we had any of this digital stuff, uh, I was a reference librarian, or actually a student reference librarian, and people would come in and they assumed we had a book somewhere under the counter that would tell them everything they needed and we'd just show it to them and they wouldn't have to do any work. 
let me tell you, Pat, that's still the case. Because mm -hmm. I'll tell you, we get people coming in here, and of course, this is a challenge in this library. These public law libraries are very challenging, because I've done a lot of reference work, too, both in academics, academia, and in law firms, which that's really where the rubber meets the road, right? But right. here, we get people coming in, self-represented litigants, and often, they don't even really know what question to ask you. Yeah. They know they need help, and we really have to work with them to figure out what they want. But guess what they want? They want us to pull out that book yep. or that form and say, here you go. <laughs> I probably figure the, law, the system has it rigged so that everyone can assume it's so much more difficult than it really is. Yeah, yeah. And, well, you know, sometimes we'll even say, hey, you know, why do you think lawyers have to get a law degree? You know? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just... They're not. just slow learners. It takes them three years. <laughs> to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. So just to get on just a little bit more with my theme, and if you'll indulge me just a little bit oh, more. Please. This is your show. <laughs> I want to acknowledge all my many and wonderful friends, and I know it's probably boring for people watching, like, who cares? But these are some of my Australian law library friends. Uh -huh. um, still good pals with these gals. Um, and we see each other when I go down. We have a standing date for lunch every other year. <laughs> um, this is Sylvia, and this is Gail. Sylvia used to be a law librarian at a law firm in Sydney, ended up as a lawyer, moved on into other things, maybe moving to Cyprus. I'm hoping so, because I want her to host me there. You, you want to go there too. Right? <laughs> I want to go visit her. Um, and my friend, dear friend Gail Davies, a uh, wonderful friend of mine, was at the family court in Sydney, ended up at DPP and is now retired and doing a lot of volunteer work for Australia's ABC, which is their version of the PBS. Um, two really good friends that I wouldn't have had without this profession and I would have been that much poorer without them. Also two um, law librarians who informed my career, who provided me support when I needed it. We've supported each other through crazy times. We had a lot of fun when we were youngsters back in the day in, in uh, shall I say, hedonistic Sydney. <laughs> It's very heated. Tell me more. Robert, <laughs> my son, and I are actually planning to go there it's probably next year. Oh, well, let me know. It won't be by road, though. <laughs> yeah, well, let me know, and I'll give you some tips and tricks. It's a beautiful city. I was so lucky to live there in the late 70s through the uh, mid-80s when Sydney was cheap. Sydney was cheap. You will not find it so these days. Well, I think that's happened a lot of places. It's happened everywhere. And, I, you know, we were young and we had a lot of fun. And I have some very, very good friends down there. And I consider myself much the richer and much the more fortunate mm -hmm. for it. Just some other law library pals of mine. One of these is Michelle Finnerty, who uh -huh. you've interviewed. And then we have uh, Sandy Martz, who was at the Washoe County Law Library. And here we are meeting up in Truckee yeah. to the west of here, uh, to the east of here. Um, and Hope after the snow season. Yeah, well, actually, this was taken right before the snow season, but yeah. And those are the kind of things that enrich our lives that even in retirement, um, we still hang out and support each other and have good times together. Michelle is still very active um, in the association, mm -hmm. um, and she's also at this time in retirement on the grand jury here in Sacramento. And I said, you know, the grand jury's really lucky to have you, because, and they are, they're very happy. I mean, a law librarian of her caliber and stature, I'm sure she's adding a great deal to that process. Yeah. Well, she, of course, it's very um, secret and private, so I don't know what specifically she's working on, but just getting the overview of what she has to do, I said to her, Michelle, I'm you, so you, glad. You don't want to know too much about what they're doing, or they'll be talking about you yeah, back no. there. <laughs> but I said, Michelle, I'm so glad you got this. You really wanted it. This was something you were really looking for. Sounds like something I do not want to do when I retire. <laughs> Sounds great for her. No, for me, I'm going to go walk about in Australia. Thank you very much. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? And two other people I want to mention we have here. On yeah. my left. And actually, let's put that one up there. Yeah, raise it a little bit, the one on your left. 
Good, that's good. The other one is off camera slightly. So this is this is Margie Mays. Oh, and Margie yeah. and I went to library school together. And what we're doing, what I did, this is something silly I did at last summer's conference mm -hmm. in Baltimore. Margie is now retired. She's had a distinguished career and was... Very much so. <laughs> very much so. And was president of AALL yeah. some years back. And a good one, too. Absolutely. She did a dynamic job. We're holding postcards from the Penrose Library at the University of Denver. We went to the University of Denver Library School. I won't tell you when, but it was a few years ago, and we all worked at the Penrose Library. And somehow I got these postcards from them, and they're actually photos of what it was like at the time when we worked there. So that's Margie, um, another good friend and companion throughout the course of my whole professional career because we went to library school together. We started out as law firm librarians mm -hmm. in Denver together. Um, Margie moved on into academia at Cornell and then it's, I believe it was St. Thomas in Minneapolis, which I recently went there on a uh, chapter visit as VIP from AALL and saw her old office and we paid homage to her. So this is one of my good friends and somebody that I've known really from the get-go. Yeah. And the other photo I was holding is also another uh, person that I went to library school, Mark Estes, who you know and you've interviewed. Um, he and I also went to library school at the same time. He ended up as a law firm librarian in Denver for many, many years and then mm -hmm. came out here to California and was at the Alameda County Public Law Library and has recently retired down to San Diego. Um, so these are my pals from library school days. So even going back that far, we can have these friendships that sustain mm -hmm. and support us. So that's it. I have many other pictures. Just one of Cole and I going to the Rolling Stones together. <laughs> and I will now date myself. I am a Rolling Stones groupie in here with Cole and I having a good time together. Well, some of us don't dare ask too much about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish I had something really racy to tell you, but I don't. <laughs> However, I'm grateful to know Mick Jagger recently had heart surgery. Yeah. And thankfully, He's going to make it. Oh, yeah, he's going to be okay. Yeah, he's going to be okay. He's supposed to still be a kid to some of us, but he isn't. <laughs> he looks amazing. That concert we went to, that was like, I don't know, it's only about three years ago. Uh, those guys are amazing. Yeah. They got out there and they rocked it, and we all sat there and said, how is Keith Richards still alive? <laughs> and not only alive, doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So that's my walk down memory lane, and that's my tribute to um, my boss, my, my current recent boss, and some of my other uh, mentors in my career and my good friends. Mm -hmm. So, you what else would you like to know? <laughs> well, if you want to talk about some of your um, career, you've mentioned some of the places you've been. Uh, maybe you might start by what attracted you to our profession well, initially? Yeah, that's a good question, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> Often we sort of fall into it somehow. Sort of. Well, really the, the genesis of it is, um, you know, when I was in college in the Wayback Machine, I was kind of going, what am I doing here? What do I want to do? Um, what is this leading to? Um, you know, am I making the best use of my time and resources and my parents' funding and all that? Mm -hmm. And I, I took some time off um, and I was working as a bank teller in, of all places, Youngstown, Ohio. That's where we lived at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I read an article somewhere. I forgot which magazine it was and it was talking about careers and they mentioned librarianship. And, you know, my family, we were fairly humble and we didn't have a lot of money. and. It looked like, you know, I was intrigued by it. They were describing, it was more descriptive about what librarianship really entailed as opposed to the, oh, you get to read a lot of books sort of thing. And I thought, well, now there's a profession I could go towards. Um, the degree didn't cost a whole lot. I had to fund myself in that. Um, and so that was where I made my decision. I applied to several library schools, and it was my father that, um, encouraged me to go to the University of Denver because mm -hmm. he had been stationed there during the war and really enjoyed Colorado and he knew me well enough to say I think you're gonna really like it out there so I think you should go west young lady go west. Yeah. 
It's a nice city. It is a nice city, and it was lovely back then. So I studied at DU, and when I got there, um, I found out about El Coco uh -huh. and their law librarianship courses. They had yeah. a fairly full-bodied program. Um, and so that's, I, I found that intriguing as well, um, and I, I thought that I would be more interested in law librarianship when I learned about it than, you know, just straight academic or public, because um, mm -hmm. back then that's kind of what I knew. Was, oh, we all would sell you on anything. Yeah. He loved the field. He loved the law librarianship. He, he was my first boss after I graduated was from he? my final degrees and oh wow I was at the University of Houston with him for oh, three Houston, years. Oh, Houston, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, those were his, and he passed away last year. That's right. I yeah, thank you. I had the honor of speaking at his memorial. Did you? Wonderful. Yeah, thank you, Al Coco. Yeah, he was also a great teacher, yeah. a great teacher. And then a year ago, I was in Denver, Robert and I were on a road trip, mm -hmm. and we went there and had uh, dinner with Joyce and their son oh. and daughter-in-law. How nice, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I do honor Al, and he did, he was probably one of the main uh, people or events or what have you that, that kind of steered me into yeah. law librarianship, and, and actually to bring it up to today, we are, we were, we are talking at the board level of AAAL about, you know, how are we letting people know about our profession, and we are hearing, and there's going to be some um, study into this at the AALL level mm -hmm. about what's happening in library schools because we're hearing that some library schools are telling students you can't be a law librarian unless you have a JD. Oh, that's not true. No, we all know that because I don't have a JD. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow and you're considered good. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I've managed to get Cable. here, <laughs> get from there to here. Um, and so, you know, that is a concern. Mm -hmm. for all of us in this profession and we want people to know you know it is welcoming and opening you do not have to have a JD it's nice it can help but there are even some prominent law librarians uh, who don't have any academic credentials that's very but you true. wouldn't know it I, no. I find it out in doing the research and then I just don't ask anything about it yeah yeah well some of our county law librarians here yeah. are very very good and very highly regarded and and they don't have a library degree for one reason or another. And hey, I would send you to them any day of the week to get li law library assistance. They are fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, it's helpful to have a lot. It's certainly helpful to have a library degree. It's certainly helpful to have a law degree. But it's having a law degree is not 100% essential. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Al was a was a, probably I guess you could say kind of almost my first mentor and kind of got me. Uh, doesn't surprise me got me on the way, yes, yes, yes. Um, and he was great, um, and from there I did um, start working at Holland and Hart mm -hmm. in Denver, um, I was there for about three years I think, I got the job right out of library school, I lucked into that, uh, my first boss was Lee Morris, who uh, you know, you mentioned in the script that you sent me, those were the early days of law firm librarianship, sort of yes. first coming along. And yeah, I watched all that develop. Yeah. Of course, I've been active in this profession for over 62 years. Well, so then you've seen just yeah. a tiny bit But I started out as a mere kid. Yeah, well, you started out when you you, you were born as a law librarian. Almost. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> yeah, so I was at Holland and Hart for about three years. That was a kind of a, I think it's like diving into the deep end of the pool in some ways. Mm -hmm. Because Lee was there for my first year, she moved on to the National Center for State Courts, and I they promoted me to be the director, and it probably was too soon. I think I did okay at it, but mm -hmm. I realized that I was somewhat in over my head. Um, but I hung in there for a couple more years. You were years. a fast learning curve. It was fast, um, but I hung in there. They they thought I was doing all right, yeah. and I did some some good now stuff. If you'd gone them. back to Al Coco and said, "Should I take this job?" He said, uh, "If you want it, do so." Uh, he did. He did. Yeah, he did. All right, doesn't surprise me. No, he did. He did. And while I was there too at Holland and Hart, my my other little claim to fame story is that. I had graduated already from DU, um, but he brought out the in, the 
known peril of all known careers, Marion Gall Gallagher, came out and did a week-long law librarianship intensive, and I did get to attend that, even mm -hmm. though I was working at the time the firm did foot the bill for me to go do that and agreed that that was a worthwhile endeavor okay. for, for them. And that was a fantastic experience of two, of course, and I'm very grateful to have had some training from Ms. Gallagher. She's such a leading light in our profession as well. So I've, I've had some good her, background. Her story is actually <laughs> part of this uh, oral history. Yes. We pieced it together uh, with some footage that we had. Oh, really? And then I did a narrative on, on camera to kind of fill in about her background. Ah, yes, yeah. 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 The footage, among other things, was her retirement party, which was in Washington, D.C. Oh, right, yeah. At, at the annual meeting. Uh-huh. I was the local center-upper of this event, so I had it uh, video recorded. Oh, wonderful. That would have been interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. We gave her the tape in those days, literally. Yeah, right, of course. As a uh, sort of a memento of the evening when all right. our friends were there. Oh, isn't that wonderful? I'm yeah. sure she appreciated that. Yeah. yeah. She was a great teacher, and I feel very uh, grateful and blessed that I had that experience with her as well. So, well, Al was one of her graduates. Yes, he was. Always very proud of it. Yes, he was. And his course is a little different from hers, but somewhat modeled after it, too. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So while I was there, I was a member of SWAL, and you dug out somewhere <laughs> <laughs> that I was the local arrangements chair for um, a, a SWAL uh, event in Denver uh -huh. at, the, at the Brown Palace Hotel, and it was Elle's deputy director, Sue Weinstein, who um, said, Jean, I want you to be the local arrangements chair, and of course I was like, a what? What do I do? And the point from that is, should anybody newer to the profession happen to watch this, you just dive in and just go for it. And I've, I've told this story um, at chapter visits too. It's like, don't wait until you feel like you have enough experience. You have it and you can go ahead and just start doing it and people will come in and help you and do that. So that was Colorado. I'm looking at the time because I do have another um, you, you have new responsibilities. As yes, it is. Today. It is. Um, after Colorado, I traveled. Um, I, I resigned from Holland and Hart on, on my own bat, and I put on a backpack on my back, and I went around the world for about 18 months. Wow. I, um, that was the days when, as a, as a single female, it was safe to hitchhike around Europe. Yeah. And I did and a little of that. Being retired when you're young enough to really enjoy it. <laughs> For a while. For a while. I ended up in southern Germany working for the U.S. Army. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't at a base. It was at a recreation center that um, if anybody has any military um, connections, they may have heard of it. It's called Garmisch Partnerkirchen, and I was just a lowly waitress in a restaurant there. It was no big shakes. It pays the bills. But it paid the bills. And it's honest living, work. I was living in the southern Alps. And it was fun. It was a fun time, and I earned enough money. I had spent time backpacking around Europe, and then I earned enough money there that I, it enabled me to fly to Southeast Asia. And then I spent like quite a few hedonistic months, nothing more shall be said, <laughs> traveling through Southeast Asia. And thereupon, I washed up on the shores of Bondi Beach in Sydney, Australia, which led to me. Um, ultimately, um, getting a job as the reference librarian at the University of Sydney mm. Law School Library. And my boss there was Margaret McAleese. Sad to say she passed away way too soon last year. Margaret <laughs> was very patient with me. I'm very, I've always been very grateful to her because I was young and um, crazy, um, but smart, and I did it, I, I, it was a good time, um, it, <laughs> I think I was a bit of a handful for her, but she forgave me, and we remained good friends for many years, um, and I did develop the first ever legal bibliographic training class for the incoming law students, I did that for two years, um, it was something that they hadn't had a notion of before, of law librarians teaching that kind of bi legal bibliographic basics. So that was interesting to work with the law faculty there and, and pull that together. Um, 
And then I, uh, Lynn uh, Pollock was going to take this long service leave and she recruited me to step into her very large shoes and step in as acting director for the Law Courts Library in Sydney. And the Law Courts Library serves the Supreme Court of New South Wales as well as the Federal Court of Australia. That was also like, wow, talk about diving in the deep end. Mm -hmm. Phew. Ha. Um, that was hard. I, I was good, good memories as long as you survived. <laughs> I survived. It was hard. It was really a challenge. That was really mm -hmm. probably one of my biggest ever career challenges was that. Um, she was kind of somewhat on the sidelines, able to mentor me a bit, but that was back in the days when we didn't have internet. We didn't have email. We didn't mm. have texting. We didn't have cell phones. So a little bit of mentorship. Today's younger colleagues have never known that. Yeah, it was like by letters, <laughs> and she was like, she was a big traveler. She was in South America, but she would sometimes send me something, and I'd be like, oh yes, yes, um, yeah. So I did that for three years, um, and I supervised a staff of something like about thirty-two people. Mm. It was a big staff. Pretty good sized operation. It was a big operation. Um, we were doing a lot of, um, it was kind of unusual, I think. They, I'm not sure exactly what they're doing now. We were creating a lot of um, uh, legal bibliographic uh, newsletters that we were sending out to various sections of what would be their equivalent of the bar. Um, and. There was, we were doing legislative histories. Um, I was doing legal research for the judges. Uh, it was a big collection. It took a lot of maintenance back in those days because um, nothing really was automated, so it was all print. Um, so yeah, that was a big operation, a big challenge. I had to do budgets both for the state of New South Wales and for the federal court system. So two budgets, you know, really interesting work, a lot of work. The best office I've had in my whole career. It was in this corner office and out this way I was looking out the Sydney Harbor to the Bear and Joey Heads and out that way I was looking out west to the Blue Mountains. But if you do too much looking out you weren't getting your work done. <laughs> I should put drapes on those windows. No, I did not put drapes on those windows. I can still see that in my yeah, mind. That's nice. It nice was sense. fabulous. It was fabulous. Yeah. Probably pre prepared you somewhat for your current uh, gig with the ALL, too. Uh, yeah, perhaps a bit, yeah, because I had to start really getting into the budgeting. Of course, at, when I was at Holland, um, at Holland and Hart in Denver, I mean, that was, uh, when I had asked the library school, can you train us on how to do budgets? And we never really got that training there. I was really mm -hmm. disappointed. And they said, oh, you'll be fine. There'll be a budget, and you'll just do what they tell you. And I went Most in. Most of their graduates go into these immense places, and they yes. mentor themselves up. And right. finally, uh, if they get to those levels, they have learned it all there. Right. But I walked into a law firm, and they were like, hey, we yeah. need a budget. <laughs> Create it. And I was like, You're the person. <laughs> I figured it out, but I had a friend that helped me with it. Yeah, yeah so the budgeting there was, was helpful, it was insightful, and I did learn a lot from that. So, And I love my time in Sydney. I was there about eight years, eight wonderful, fabulous, marvelous years. Um, and then I moved on, and I did another about year and a half of backpacking around the world. Again, going in the opposite direction, spending six months in India. Um, spending several months in Europe, staying with friends of mine who lived there at the time, and so on and so forth, and landed back in the United States and suffered severe culture shock coming back into Ronald Reagan's America. I was really, you know, they talk about when you leave the country for the first time, especially if you go somewhere really different, like you go to a third world country or what, mm -hmm. what have you, that you can really struggle with culture shock. The worst culture shock I had was coming back to the United States mm -hmm. in, the, in the mid to late 80s. It was really, for me, a big culture shock. And I lucked out because a dear friend of mine from Sydney, was um, staying in some other friend's sublet apartment in Greenwich Village in New York City, and I ended up hanging out with Bernard in um, Greenwich Village for about three months, and that's how I sort of eased back into the United States. Mm -hmm. um, I had just enough money to kind of get by until I could get my head back on straight and figure out what I was doing here. It was really 
a challenge. Um, interesting. I mean, I had no anticipation of that happening. I thought, oh, I'll just go back, and there I am. So um, that, that was nice, and spending time having that opportunity to kind of live in, in the village in New York City was, was nice. I mean, it was fortunate. Um, and then I got a job um, at Fox Rothschild for a while in Philly, um, and then at the Third Circuit Court of Appeals in Philadelphia. And those were interesting jobs. I was kind of always, though, looking to the West and to coming back to California. Um, and so I spent some time there, honed my skills, and um, when I started looking for jobs on the West Coast, I always had this vision that I would be in San Francisco. I suppose everyone in the East thinks of the West Coast as San Francisco, maybe L.A. too. L.A., yeah. But I had friends in San Francisco, and I'd spent some time there, and I'd really always been like, San Francisco, you know. And I did get a couple job offers in San Francisco, but I, interestingly enough and oddly enough, I got a job offer to work at this firm called McCormick Barstow in Fresno as their IT manager, because in the meantime, while I was in Philly, I went back to Drexel University and I got IT, well, the equivalent of what is now IT certification. That was back in the wild and wooly days of, of automation when everything was just starting up, and I crafted a degree in information technology for myself, and um, I was offered a job at McCormick um, as their IT manager, mm -hmm. and they paid to move me out here, which I'm very grateful for. I worked for them for about six years, and to pay the wages of my sins, they made me in charge of the library because mm -hmm. I did have the law library background. And my first law librarian that I supervised was this lady, Coral Henning. Uh -huh. And that's where Coral and I met. She came down to Fresno, and I thought to myself, I have a feeling Fresno isn't the place for this gal. Uh -huh. She stuck it out for about a year with me, and we, we really got along well. Um, she ran the library very well. She mm -hmm. was already out there. As part, she was the chair of, the, of NoCal's uh, Public Access Committee, and she was sometimes going off to public libraries in the area and teaching them about legal basics of legal research and legal reference and legal materials. They were very grateful for that. So she stayed for about a year there, and that was the beginning of a long and valuable friendship between us. Um, so I was at McCormick for about six years, um, and then from there I moved down south to San Diego, where I worked at the San Diego County Public Law Library for about six years. And of course, San Diego is wonderful and beautiful, um, and while I was at San Diego, Coral and I did still collaborate. That was the turning point when the county law libraries kind of used to be sort of almost an adjunct to the um, law firms, and were serving more the legal profession and the lawyers, mm -hmm. and that was the turning point where they really started moving into serving the self-represented litigants. And I got a couple uh, California LSTA grants to start developing um, legal training classes for self-represented litigants. Mm -hmm. Coral and I were talking a lot about this. She was starting to develop training classes for this library here in Sacramento. She even came down to San Diego to see what we were doing. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and then I, we, the classes that we developed in San Diego for the grant, we took on the road and we went around and trained in four different locations, um, the other county law librarians around the state, um, including coming here and doing training. It wasn't in this building, we were in another building just mm -hmm. down the road here, um, and did a training class there. And um, sometime after that was when the um, prior director here, Shirley David, who was fabulous, did a wonderful job, and. I will be having lunch with her next Monday in Maui. <laughs> she decided to retire, and she has been um, moved to the Big Island of Hawaii, and Coral was hired as the director. And shortly after she was hired, she called me up, and she said, I want you to come up here and work with me. And I was like, but, 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 San Diego, San Diego. And she said, no, you got to come up. 
uh, you got to be here, you got to help me. And so uh, I was hired on as her assistant director for support services, supervising um, IT. I have to pay the wages of my sins. I keep getting stuck with IT. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the technical services department. And also at that time, I was also managing a uh, print library service that we were running for this for the Superior Court library system. And I have to say, I've never looked back. Oh, that's great. I have never looked back. Yeah. It's been a, a wonderful ride here. I uh, feel so um, humble to be part of this library and its wonderful staff who really have risen up to fulfill the vision and mission that Coral set for us mm -hmm. um, and that the board has set for us as well. Um, I think we've all worked hard together and, and have done a good job and yeah. here we are today and so sad that Coral left us so suddenly and so young um, yeah. but here we are today. Well that's one aspect of life that we can't control too well. That's for sure. That's yeah. just the way it is. Well, it's been fabulous talking to you this morning. Um, I want to ask if there's anything more that you want to add before we conclude this uh, session, because I think we're nearing the end. We're getting close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I don't know, did you want me to say anything else about double A, double L and being on the board? Well, if you want to, I know your time just, is tight, but uh, it would be sort of interesting if you have a few moments to yeah. talk about what you do there and just a couple what attracts you to um, being in the leadership uh, role of the association yeah. and the profession. Yeah. Well, I've always been active at the, um, at the chapter level and I've mm -hmm. done my you know I could go on and on but I won't um, but I've done a lot at the chapter level yeah, I, know, I was I tried to visit here and you <laughs> some years ago and you were off running into some meeting <laughs> yes it was I, I forget what it was um, I was president of NoCal back in like 2013 somewhere around there but I've done a bunch of stuff at the yeah. chapter level I've also been active at the special interest section level mainly with the computing services SIS I've been on their board a couple times and mm -hmm. you know so on and so forth I really enjoy that group a lot well until you ended up on the executive board it was those other things that would trigger being included in the group we wanted to add to our uh, uh, oral history yeah mm -hmm. surely would have been added but you know I Getting I'm on to Hawaii. my own dime on these trips, and <laughs> Hawaii is a little too far. It would be nice to go, though, yeah, and if you I've ever been decide. There once. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I kind of like, well, the jobs I had were usually really pretty demanding and, mm -hmm. and consuming, and I, it was hard for me to think about doing national. Uh, Mark Estes and Mar uh, Margie Mays, who I held up their pictures before, they were kind of always gently chiding me and saying, you should be doing more at the yeah. national level. And I was kind of like, ah, oh, I'm sort of well, you're there now, but, yeah. you know, being president of the chapter, being active in other SISs and stuff, and especially in leadership roles, is, is what we look for in selecting yeah. participants. Yeah, I guess that's it. Well, yeah. I, I had been chapter council chair. And so as chapter council chair, you, you do go to the board meetings. Um, yeah. Not You can't vote in, and you participate less than the board members, but you are there to you know, provide information. And I, I think that's how my name rose to the top, so to speak. And I was very honored when they asked me to run. And I heard Margie in the one ear and Mark in the other ear and saying, you got to do this, Gene. You darn well better. <laughs> you got to do this. And I'm like, oh. Okay. So I talked to Coral and she said, yes, you should uh -huh. definitely run. And of course, it's contested, so you don't know. And I ran against somebody, uh, Lane Connect, who's, who's very fabulous. And I'm very honored to have um, been running with her. And yeah. I somehow managed to pull it off. I don't know how that happened, but it did. It has been an interesting um, experience to be on the board. And if people have an opportunity to do it, I would encourage it because you... It is giving back to your profession. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need committed and engaged and involved board members to help run the association and make the decisions. And it's it's challenging. It can be challenging at times, and sometimes we're confronted with hard decisions and naughty mm -hmm. issues that we have to grapple with. Um, I've enjoyed being treasurer, surprisingly enough. I, I know finance and 
accounts and money and everything isn't always everybody's most interesting thing, but yeah. I'm sort of but, a... But you have a person on staff. Well, I... Does but, some of that, too. Do, yeah, we do. At the association level, not yes. here. Yes, they have a chief financial officer yeah. who carries the heavy load. Yeah. And as treasurer, you really don't have... You're not writing checks. You're not doing mm -hmm. any of that stuff. But there are things that you have to keep your eye on and, and be involved in, engaged in. And yeah. I do kind of like that work, and I think I have some, if I may say so myself, some, some skill and facility with it. And the one thing I really loved, mm -hmm. which they all tease me about and laugh at, I just love when I go to the Finance and Budget Committee meeting, which was just recently in March, and they, um, the investment advisor comes and talks about our investments and mm -hmm. fascinated by it. So. Um, yeah, it's been an interesting run. I'm presently um, mentoring Cornell Winston, who will take over and I'm sure do a fabulous job as the next treasurer. Um, I'll be sort of sad to say goodbye and then also sort of like, okay, good. <laughs> but it has been, it's, it's, you do really get that inside look and how the association is run and the challenges that there are and that it's not easy. And people sometimes get upset understandably but they think oh you're you're doing this or you're not paying attention to that and it's really you're you're dealing with all those competing demands and you're looking at you know the money's finite and you have to make hard decisions sometimes oh, yeah. and you sometimes have to say sorry no um, and so it's been a challenge but it, it's been interesting and yet another case where I've met people that I would probably not have met and gotten to be close mm -hmm. to them. Um, and again, another enriching experience that I'm grateful for. I too served on the board at various times and uh, some of no. my closest friends Come I met that. as fellow board members. I can believe it. Yeah. yeah, it is an interesting experience, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, you sort of bond in a special way. You do, you do. Yeah. yeah, so you would understand that. Yeah, I'm very grateful for that experience. Good. Yeah. Well, perhaps uh, on that, uh, Jean Willis, I should thank you for uh, being part of our session this morning and talking to us on camera for the oral history. And in doing so, I'm thanking you on behalf of our, mentor, our, our colleagues, uh, Frank Hodak um, and Michelle Wu, and of course Dick Spinelli, yes. with whom I have had the pleasure for a number of years now to work to put together uh, the oral history of law librarianship for Hein Online. Yeah, we're Thank very you. grateful to all of you, and especially yeah. Dick and Hein Online. Yeah. They've done well, a great job. Well, that has been a fantastic way to sort of get reacquainted with everybody, too, and go see yeah. my friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I was sort of off the shelf for a few years because my late wife was quite yeah. ill. Oh, and yeah. after uh, I was a widower, uh, I was able to do this and asked if I would do it, and I did. Oh, great. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you so much, Pat, for doing that. We do appreciate yeah. it. It's been a labor of love, truly. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you very much.